my boy Noit, the viewers of the tube. It's your boy coming to you guys once again from the stunning streets of Portugal. And I'm ready to bring the house down today. And not just any house, the White House. So are you ready for some presidential news that involves cryptocurrency? Well, salute those stars because it's time for Chico Crypto. Well, first, let's talk about Bitcoin as the price has been going up, down, and now on the way back up again. Pulling out the seven day chart, the price was up, and last Wednesday it went on fire, pumping all the way up to $67,000. But then it started to dip and dip hard. By the end of last week on Sunday, it had fallen all the way down to 60K support. From the top Wednesday to the bottom on Sunday, it was a five day loss of over 10%. The old rugger was pulled after the hype of crossing our old all-time high died down, and I was pretty dang spot on with my prediction that this was going to happen. Not exactly, but pretty dang close. Let's listen to what I had to say last week. Just think about the hype when Bitcoin crosses the old all-time high, and it keeps going, setting new high after new high, up to 70K. Those longers who have been scared to put in a trade couldn't help themselves anymore, and they would start throwing in the big trades once again. And that is when it will be pulled towards the end of the month. The old rugger, the big dip, which will net exchanges over 1 billion in long liquidations. The price dipping from around 70K back to around Plan B's closed prediction of 63k so it didn't dip from 70k to 63k a 7k fall but dipped from 67k to 60k a 7k fall i wasn't spot on with where it would dip from and two but was spot on with the amount so where are we going to go next well we are turning towards the end of the month october and it's been a superbly bullish month already we went from around 47,100 October 1st to just above 63K as of yesterday. That's an over 33% gain. Now, if we compare those October gains with previous years, we can see this 33% pump would make this 2021 month the third highest October pump in Bitcoin's history. The only other two years it would be behind is the 48% gain set in October of 2013 and of 2017. Now, what's special about those years, 2013 and 2017? Well, those were the years where Bitcoin went into parabolic runs just before an extended bear market. The 2013 run was where Bitcoin hit a high of near $1,200. And the 2017 run was where Bitcoin hit a high of nearly $20,000. And we are in the midst of another parabolic run. So is Bitcoin going to match those years prior, hitting a 48% gain in October? Well, guess where the price would be if so? A 48% gain from the price October 1st, which was about 47,100, would be about $70,000. And the more things change, the more they stay the same. And me thinks this last week of October could get hot once again, pushing BTC up to that 70K level. What does that mean though? BTC pushing up to new highs and then settling in around 70K. Another big alt season would begin. Although there is another indicator telling me another parabolic alt season is coming. And that is chain link if you haven't noticed lately that stinky linky has been pumping and pumping nicely chain link since last tuesday has gone from 23 dollars and 71 cents to as of monday this week 31 dollars and 38 cents that's a pump of over 32 percent so if you didn't know chain link is a laggard which goes parabolic kicking off altcoin bull runs the price takes some time to get moving, but when it does, it captures the attention of the entire markets and sets the stage for others to really get moving. This has happened in the past on more than a few occasions. Do you remember the DeFi summer bubble of 2020? Well, checking out the chart of DeFi TVL back then, it started to take off in June and July, but by August, it started going parabolic. 
Now, pulling out the price chart of Chainlink, we can see Chainlink pumped a bit in June and July of 2020, but in August it went wild, helping set the stage for other DeFi alts to shine and capture TVL. So why is this? Well, Chainlink is an integral part of DeFi, as almost every DeFi protocol out there utilizes their oracles for accessing data and beyond. Checking out a graph of Chainlink integrations, they have broken 800 and as of early October sat at 839. Their next closest competitors, Berry Data and Ban, sit at just 84 and 72 integrations. Now, how much of DeFi is secured by Chainlink? Well, Mr. Chainlink got himself just talked about this a couple days ago. He said, the Chainlink network provides a wide range of decentralized services, securing over 75 billion TVL. That's more than many individual blockchains in comparison, in which he lists these blockchains to compare. So Chainlink is securing more than blockchains itself, but you really see the impact when you look at DeFi Pulse and DeFi TVL. As we can see, total TVL across the top DeFi apps and platforms just crossed 100 billion once again. So with Chainlink 75 billion TVL, Chainlink is securing 75% of DeFi. So what I've been saying for years, some of the other YouTubers are starting to agree with. Like Benjamin Cohen tweeted, a link is criminally undervalued. Although there is another crypto who is criminally undervalued and they had some of the biggest news this space has ever seen and not too many people noticed. But before we get into that, it's time for a sponsored segment of this video brought to you by the Tango Bulls IOTA Advocacy Group. And like always, the details of our arrangement can be found below. The blockchain trilemma, a term coined by Vitalik Buterin, addresses the challenge in creating a blockchain that is scalable, decentralized, and secure without sacrificing any faucet. Many projects are in pursuit of this perfectly harmonized scenario, but one massive OG crypto project you probably haven't heard from in a while has solved the trilemma, and now they are proving it. And with their latest announcements, it's clear a sleeping giant has just been awakened and things are about to get interesting. IOTA, led by co-founder Dominic Schneiner and the IOTA Foundation, are more than crypto OGs, they're pioneers. In 2016, they were the first to introduce a DAG protocol, which they call Tangle, an alternative distributed ledger technology to blockchains, allowing for a more scalable, fee-less, lightning-fast, and fully decentralized network, while also being able to lay claim as being the most eco-friendly. Their initial vision was focused on building the machine economy using IoT, and that's certainly still a core of their vision, but over the past two years, their vision has evolved, and you can now see IOTA as being a trust layer for the world, not just for IoT, but for finance and data use cases, which of course means integrating DeFi and NFTs. These aren't just visions and promises for what's to come, but a testament to what they've been building these last two years. In April, they released Chrysalis, IOTA's version 1.5, the most extensive upgrade in IOTA's history, and later released the 2.0 DevNet, officially kickstarting their pathway to full decentralization. But the most exciting news of all came this Thursday with the beta release for IOTA smart contracts. This means IOTA will now support the Ethereum EVM and smart contracts written in Solidity, Go, or Rust. With full EVM compatibility, all pre-existing ETH-based dApps and projects and developers can now seamlessly build on IOTA's Feeless DAG network, which means Feeless. Users will be able to wrap and move any asset across any smart contract platform, Feeless. Imagine the same DeFi space and NFT marketplace as we see today, but with no gas and delays. This isn't just some fantasy, this is in beta. This is ready to change the game. This integration of smart contracts is going live with a top 50 market cap OG crypto giant, led by a foundation with a global team of over 200 people who have been through it all. Some of those other crypto giants that made billions during the 2017 bull run lost their vision and their way and they took the money with them. 
not iota instead they decided to take the best of the technology they built and polish it for DeFi prime time putting them in one of the most favorable positions in the space prime for explosive growth and mass adoption so people are just starting to figure out iota is back in the game in a major way right now is the time to dive in and watch the growth happen before your very eyes several projects like tangle c and tangle swap are already in motion and word on the street is you can expect some interesting airdrops and yield farming opportunities as dApps join the IOTA transformation. The good news is IOTA boasts one of the largest and most helpful communities in all of blockchain. All their links can be found below. But if you have any questions, jump into their Discord where one of their 50,000 plus members would be happy to help. Now back to that massive crypto news, which has went fully under the radar, White House? And it has to do with one of my favorite crypto projects, Energy Web Chain. So there is a very important Energy Web team member we need to dive into, Claire Henley. Going to a profile on her from Yale Center of Business and the Environment, they say, Claire Henley directs the Energy Web Foundation's technology deployment work, developing the frameworks, technical standards, and best practices necessary to drive adoption of blockchain technology by the energy sector. Her portfolio includes EW Origin, a secure, low-cost public tracking system for renewable energy credits. EW Link, a set of standards and best practices to connect distributed energy assets to the blockchain. And the D3A Simulation, a tool to evaluate the economic impacts of a blockchain-based transactive energy model for electricity grids. Also, we can see below, prior to Energy Web, she was a part of the co-founders of the Energy Web, the Rocky Mountain Institute, RMI. So, Claire helped create some of the most important pieces of the Energy Web stack, but she did much more than that. Claire is no stranger to energy and politics. In August of 2018, she testified before the U.S. Senate on blockchain and the energy sector. So what is the big news that has to do with Claire? Well, it has to do with politics. Last week, the White House announced the appointment of the 2021-2022 White House Fellows. And this prestigious White House Fellowship program embeds professionals from diverse backgrounds for a year of working as a full-time paid fellow for White House staff, cabinet secretaries, and other senior government officials. And as we can see, Claire Henley is placed on the special presidential envoy on climate. And in her bio, they even mention Energy Web and the Rocky Mountain Institute. So, Claire Henley was specially placed on this new climate envoy, whose goal is to reshape America's energy future. From the looks of this appointment, it seems the U.S. government is interested in blockchain and energy, and it's possible the solutions for the U.S. could be coming from some of the tech Claire built with the Energy Web Foundation. So, how do you like those presidential energy apples? Cheers, viewers. I'll see you next time.